want to imagine it's 6 30 a.m in the morning you sip on your coffee and of course you open your laptop and as you're opening your laptop of course the work day starts unbeknownst to is that you have a productivity tracker and of course as you log in it's tracking you but by 10 15 you had your coffee at 7 and now you're really feeling a bit down you have a lull and it's a little time now imagine a world where every task that you perform is meticulously tracked by artificial intelligence it's not by a person but an intelligent machine a world where the issue of accountability and intrusion becomes razor thin because in the era of AI surveillance this is possible but this is just not a story it's about what will happen if we don't take these things in our hands it's about a workforce a global workforce that will be transformed profoundly with AI surveillance but this story isn't about you it's about all of us a workforce that is going to be gradually shifting towards artificial intelligence and quietly introducing AI surveillance at the back end. And we must understand the implications. I went to Brazil a few weeks ago, and what I saw as it relates to children learning was paramount to surveillance. Based on what the person showed, this artificial intelligence system could track students' facial features and identify when they're not paying attention, when they're off task, when they're puzzled, or just curious. And of course, the flip side of that will be teachers being monitored. The big question is how do we balance efficiency and ethics in the workplace, increasingly shaped by AI-powered monitoring tools? And what does it mean for the jobs of tomorrow? When we look at the evolution of workplace surveillance, it has always been around. It has been around for the longest time, from people signing in, monitoring in the workplace, clocking in. Organizations have always sought to measure productivity. And they think productivity is sometimes sitting around a desk and doing a task. But that's far from the reality. But today, AI takes it a step further. It really does. When we look at certain tools monitoring people, how they work, their screen activity time, and so forth. In COVID, we realized that several things happened. Workers were being monitored as it relates to their time on computer and stroke on their keyboards. Of course, workers went around that and they had applications that could simulate the very same thing that they were trying to measure at the workplace. I want to say that we have to understand the need for productivity, but at the same time, understand there's also people's rights that we have to be concerned about. We also have wearable devices such as smart helmets, and these smart helmets can now tell when someone is tired or just needs to rest. On the surface, it sounds wonderful, great, because then if the person is on the high-rise building, you can say to the person, you might want to come down because it is dangerous based on how we are measuring your fatigue. But the reality is, is it all about fatigue? Or it's something else? Let us look at it. To optimize performance requires many things, not just surveillance. But we always focus on surveillance and monitoring for optimization of performance. But there are many factors influencing the issue of performance. And let me say that we have to understand the need to trust workers and understand the human experience as they work. Let me say that if you want to measure performance, some people push you to the next limit. So we have to be very careful of that. There's an ethical dilemma as it relates to AI surveillance, which raises three critical questions that we must address. And we must understand that these questions are important. What about the person's privacy and productivity? If every action in the workplace is monitored, where does your private life begin and where does it end? We have to understand that this is important. In 2022, according to one report, over 60% of remote workers reported feeling uneasy about AI tracking tools that were being deployed by their, of course, employers. Imagine the impact on people's mental health when they know someone is watching over them. To be honest, I don't even like someone being in my kitchen to watch me when I'm cooking. For me, it's my own space. I want to do my own thing and do my own prep without someone monitoring and say, put that there, put that there. That's not me. So we have to understand that some monitoring is important, of course, but you should not have someone 24-7 over your shoulder. Let's also say that algorithms are trained on biased data sets and can misinterpret a worker's behavior. For example, 
Personally, if I'm not feeling well, I do a lot of stretching. And that's what my body calls for. If I'm being monitored and someone sees me stretching, they might interpret that as being lazy or not on task. Imagine another system that flags someone for getting up from their desk regularly. Unknown to the people monitoring the system or the system itself is that this individual has a medical condition and needs to go to the restroom more often than someone else. Just imagine that implication. So there are issues that we have to understand that AI surveillance, when it's coming away, we have to be, of course, mindful of certain things and, of course, ask for us to be part of the system as it relates to setting boundaries and guidelines. Let's look at data dynamics. When data flows upward, but not downward, when employees are scrutinized with no visibility into the decision-making, it reinforces a hierarchy into the organization. It disempowers the workforce, and that is what we cannot take at this point in time. As we continue to work in our organizations, let us not forget that AI is redesigning the way we think and work. The future of work is going to be connected to AI and some sort of surveillance. But let us put a position that AI surveillance should not lead to a, a system that feels like you're in prison, but also it should be a system that is addressed if going to be used in an ethical manner and, of course, allowing people to have a level of privacy as you monitor them. There was one organization in the United States who decided that it was okay to put a camera exactly where one worker was working. They wanted to monitor that worker because the worker must have been seen as someone with a different perspective or sometimes it could be problematic. So we have to understand there needs to be a communication when you do these things. First, companies should communicate what is being tracked and why it's being tracked. Workers must have the ability to opt in and opt out or to challenge unfair evaluation. And of course, workers' rights must be upheld. The rise of these sort of systems in our workplace is not going to go away, it will continue. But rather than scrutinizing individuals, we can use AI systems to really enhance people's work life as we monitor them, so to speak. AI systems can flag burnout and, of course, suggest employees take a break, not to punish them because they weren't on task. They could have many problems, including problems at home. We must consider collaboration over control. Let's design systems that give workers the ownership of the data that it produces. What if an employee has a productivity pattern that's different from others? For example, I go to work at 7.15 in the morning. My productivity is very up, 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 up at that point in time. And by, I would say, three, four, I'm going down because I've already completed seven, going on to eight hours of work. But someone coming in at, let's say, for instance, nine, their productivity might reach a peak at 12 and continue upward until maybe one or two. Notwithstanding, their productivity will be different from mine. So we have to consider flexibility as it relates to working time. And sometimes employers need to be open towards this sort of flexibility to ensure that we're not taking monitoring out of the context and understand that each worker is not on a production line that produces at a fixed time. We know that AI is going to change the workforce for tomorrow. So where does it leave us? It's a mirror into the values we have embedded in our workplace. The future of work should not be designed by capabilities of machines. And of course, I mean AI machines, but by choices people make, managers, policymakers, and workers who design these systems and will use these systems. As I close, let me say, let us commit to a future where AI empowers us to be more human and not just less of a human. A future where surveillance is not about control, but collaboration. A future where every keystroke tracked by machine has a deeper trust that is built in it. Because as we look through the eyes of the machine, we must never lose sight of what it means to be a human. And that's all for now. Remember to like and subscribe to this channel.